So I've got a brand new setup guide for you today and if you're interested in emulating your old PSP collection and displaying them, as you can see right here, this setup guide is definitely going to be for you. I'm looking at the awesome PPSSPP standard edition and of course there's also the gold edition of PPSSPP which I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to do the usual in this setup guide, I'm going to show you the video settings and how to get the best performance out of your maybe potato computer that you could be running. Uh, if you do have a potato computer, it's not the end of the world. We can still get PSP games looking pretty good. It's not that demanding on hardware. So in this case, I'm using PPSSPP and I've got this upscaled to 4K. So if you've got something beefy, you've got a chunky, juicy computer, then there's a good possibility you can actually get your collection of PSP games looking just like this. So if you're interested in PSP and getting 4K quality games out of them, check this one out. Okay then, so before I start today's setup guide for PPSSPP, just make sure you hit notifications, subscribe and like if you liked today's video, and also be sure to check out my other emulation setup guides. Just recently, I've uploaded RPCS3 for PlayStation 3 emulation, as well as Duck Station, and I'm soon going to be uploading the awesome PCSX2 setup guide. So let's get into this. What we're going to do first is just go over to the PPSSPP website and you've got two options here. You can either download the free version of it or you can go and buy, purchase rather, the gold edition of this. And for this, you get some extra added features. But if you want to support the developers of PPSSPP, then just go and buy the gold. So we're going to go to download. And as we can see, this is actually for Android as well. And I've covered that for Android in the past. And we got the gold just here for Windows. And this is also compatible with Mac OS. Now we got several different options for the Windows free version of PPSSPP. Uh, we got the installer version and we got the portable version. Now if you download the portable version of PPSSPP, everything's going to be self-contained within a folder for example. If you download the installer of it, then it's actually going installed to your hard drive. So for this, I'm going to download the portable one just for simplicity. If you download the installer version, then just install it to your computer. And as we can see, the version this is for, which we're doing today, uh, released in September this year, 2023. And you can read about that, but I'll leave the link in my description so you can go direct to this website to download it. Now, let me just introduce you to Razer Cortex. If you've got a lower end computer, or rather what some people might prefer to as a potato, then Razer Cortex frees up a lot of your memory and your background processes on your computer. So obviously when your computer is turned on, you've got a lot of things running in the background and they're gonna be affecting your emulation's performance. Now, if I press Control, Alt and Delete, and go to task manager right now in the background i've got a lot of processes going on and of course this is hungry on resources so as we can see at the top uh, 46 percent of my memory is being used by some of these background processes that we don't necessarily use and also my cpu is being used so what we're going to do then if you choose to download this just download it and it's very easy to use. I'll show you in a minute how to do that. So what we're gonna do then is actually install PPSSPP. So once you've downloaded your PPSSPP, like I say, I've just downloaded a portable version of this, you're gonna get a zip file or a zip folder. Uh, just right click on the desktop, new folder, and I'm gonna call this one PPSSPP. And I'm gonna drag this zipped folder inside of this created folder. And inside of here, I'm just going to right click on it and use WinRAR to extract this, so it's extract here. And we got lots of goodies come out. So we're going to delete this zip folder. Now the only game I've got for PSP is Outrun 2006. It's a great game and it really looks amazing on PPSSPP once we configure its settings. So I'm going to just drag this inside of this PPSSPP folder. 
and I'm going to run the pppppp windows64.exe which is the executable file and here we go and if I just expand this window what we're going to do then is link the games folder which is my pppppp folder I've just created onto the graphical user interface so if I go to browse and my PSP folder is on my desktop and here it is so I'm going to press OK and as we can see we've now got a little icon for the Outrun game and if we go over to these horizontal lines just here we can have it displayed like this as well so what I'm going to do is just quickly go to settings and controls and if I use the top option control mapping normally this should configure straight out of the box for you but if you want to configure a controller, I'm using my Google Stadia controller for this. I'm going to just left click on the D-pad up and press the up button on my D-pad. And as we can see, that's now responded to that. And D-pad down, D-pad down. So like I say, this has already automatically configured it for me. But if it hasn't for you, then this is how you do it. So if we go back out of here and back again what we're going to do next is just open up the game itself remember we don't need any bios files for psp it runs straight out of the box so i'm going to run outrun on default settings without messing around with any video settings so just double left click on that or i can use my stadium controller. And if I just double left click on the screen, just to bring that into full screen mode. So as we can see, it looks pretty bad. Anti-aliasing is all over the place, and we could do with popping on VSync if it's not turned on. And we can also bump this up to 4K and beyond if we want to. So first of all, I'm going to just go to recent just there, and that's going to show me the last game I played. And if I go over to settings, we're going to look at render and resolution. And by default, when you download this, it should be set to either auto one by one or one times PSP so in theory we can actually boost this up to 4k so I'm going to whack on 4k and see how well this performs in a minute and obviously I want to boot the games up in full screen uh, vsync just to eliminate any screen tear we want to put that on and if we just scroll down under graphics until we get to texture scaling upscale level uh, we're going to bump this up to around two times for now and just be aware when you're increasing the graphics it's going to be very wearing on your computer so if you've got a potato like I say just you can attempt to do this but it's going to be likely lagging for you so that's entirely your decision and under texture filtering we got anastrophic filtering again if you've got a potato or even a mid-range computer then just go careful with these settings but if your games begin to lag 
just work backwards that's how I do so max everything out until you find a sweet point so for this I'm gonna just put this on two times and if you watch my other videos you'll probably know by now that anastroph filtering just blurs things up a little bit so it gets rid of pixelation so I'm gonna just put this on the two times and under texture filtering I'm gonna put this on to nearest and if I go back now now, what I was saying just a minute ago about Razer Cortex, this, I've actually got Razer Cortex installed on my computer. What this is going to do is, like I was saying before, is freeze up memory and it deletes or rather disables unnecessary background processes. So to do this, once you've installed it, just go to Game Booster and just go to Boost Now. And as you can see, this is now releasing memory. But it's just freed up 2.16 gigabyte for me, so it's pretty handy to have. So if we go back in the PSP and open up the XE again. And this time with those new video settings applied, I'm going to just go into the game. And if I press escape on my keyboard, we can enter this menu just here and we can then choose save states if you want to. So for example, once I'm in this menu just here, I'm just going to select save state one. And I'm pressing escape again. And as you can see, it's now saved that part of the game. And if I use my controller actually to go over to load state. And it really is that simple. So as you can see, it looks wonderful. Uh, considering this was for a very, very low resolution, around 17 years ago the PSP released. And whilst we're in this menu, we can actually configure the video settings for each game specifically in PPSSPP. So as we can see, we got game settings here. If we just go into game settings, we can then mess around with the individual game settings. So as you can see, this is working okay with the settings I've got. So it did lag every now and again. So like I say, it's just a process of elimination. So uh, the catalyst for this is likely going to be upscale level and anastrophic filtering. So for example, if I put upscale level up to five times and I put anastrophic filtering up to 16 times, if I go back into the game now, I'd imagine it's really going to lag. So let's test this. So back. Continue. My days were changing. Excitements I didn't expect. I never knew riding with you could bring so much wonder. Ah! Are you going to give up? You're a beautiful machine. Never so 
flows, never stops. This was so actually, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. In fact, my gaming laptop, it impresses me most times. And I'm quite impressed with that. So I'm running that currently just then on 4K with 16 times anastrophic filtering, pretty much maxed out. And to exit the game, if we just go to exit to menu, and in terms of saving your games, you've either got the option of saving load state, which you can do it on the fly whenever you want to save part of the game, or PPSSPP, it emulates the memory stick. And if we go to memstick just here, if you was familiar with the original PSP and you ever connected the PSP to your computer, all of these folders here are going to look very familiar to you. So normally in save data, this is where our save official save is, that is for PSP games. And one last thing I forgot to mention, it does accept .iso files, and they're probably the best bet for this. As we can see here, the Outrun game I've got is a .iso file, and like I said, they work flawlessly with PPSSPP. So that's today's setup guide for PPSSPP. Like I just mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've just recently done uh, RPCS3 and Duck Station. So I thought I've got to do PSP, stick with the Sony brand. And at some point soon, I'm going to be uploading a new setup guide for standalone PCSX2, which is, of course, PlayStation 2 emulation for Windows. So, like I say, if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, be sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content on my channel. Also, join me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. And no pressure, but I do ask for donations from time to time. This helps expand my channel and give it a bit more depth in the new year coming up soon. So, anyways, until next time, stay retro.